Hello, I'm James Barth from Rock Hard 4x4, and I want to take a minute and show you some of the features of our bumper and tire carrier for your Jeep JL. Now, the main portion of the bumper is designed out of quarter-inch material that is CNC bent and welded and then powder coated. It has one-inch D-rings that come through the bumper. It is designed to work with your sensors, and it comes with our Rock Hard 4x4 sensor holders. It has your license plate mount in it, along with your factory light and your trailer towing wiring kit. The swing is designed and built out of 2x3 tubing with 2x2 tubing on an angle. We have a center channel here that is adjustable for your hikes, for different hikes of setting the tire, whether you want it up, whether you want it down, whether you want it in, whether you want it out, depending on the tire and the spare tire of which you're installing on it. It does have your high lift jack mounts included. It does have an antenna mount right here also. This tire carrier is an extremely strong tire carrier. It does work with the factory brake light system. It's easy to stall. It's probably going to take you around three to four hours for the installation. Uh, we'll go through the installation now. We're going to go ahead and remove the camera section from the tire carrier by removing these two screws here and the two that hold the light in place using a Torx T25. Now that you've went ahead and knocked the studs out of the back of the mount, which contains the camera mount all in this one piece, you're going to use a T9 Torx to remove the screws. Okay. Now you need to unclip the camera from the wiring harness. Push on this tab and pull back. To remove the rear panel access, you're going to pop the clips here, here, and here. That'll allow this to come down to be removed. Next, you go ahead and pull and pull off the clips to remove it. This allowing access into the back area. Whether you're removing a stock plastic or the stock steel bumper, the idea is still the same as far as the removal. We're going to go ahead and remove the bolts along the bottom area using a 16 millimeter on this particular one. And we'll use a 13 16 here on the tow hook area and up along the side. Let's go ahead and remove all those bolts. Now use an 8mm socket and remove the mounting screws that hold this plastic in place on both sides. Repeat the same thing on the other side. Then we need to remove this bracket here at the frame and here to remove this out of the way using a 16mm socket. Locate your electrical in the inner wheel well on the left hand side. There can be some differences in the plugs, but you're going to go ahead and pull this little white tab up and push in on this tab will allow it to release. Go ahead and remove the bumper off of the Jeep. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the wiring harness from the rear bumper. You're going to go ahead and clip the wire tie areas that it's held in place and then go ahead and unclip from the license plate light. Now, the key to this here is to keep your sensors oriented the same. One, two, three, four, and also which is top on each one. So we'll take a Sharpie as we take them out. You'll pinch the sensor clip to remove the sensor, and you're gonna mark of what is the top and in a numerical number. This way you can put them in so that they work the same. Something else to remember, whether it's a plastic bumper or the steel bumper, the theory is the same here. You're going to remove the wiring harness, remove the sensors, and keep them in order. To remove the sensor, you're going to pull the plastic clips away from each one of these clipped areas. You want to mark the sensors one, two, three, four, and then I also mark the top so that I know which orientation to put them in our replacement bumper. Here's your license plate light. You want to remove it by pushing on the clip and pulling it off. Next, you will take out the other sensors and then take a 10 millimeter socket to remove the light. Now, this has plastic screws that hold the light in place. 
there are these cap nuts that go on here. You want to you want to save those as we're going to reuse them. To remove the electrical, you're going to push in on this plug piece right here and pull it off. Now you can remove this from the housing by pinching the metal clips on both sides. Now that we got all the components removed out of your factory rear bumper, whether it's the plastic or the steel version, we're going to go ahead and install those components into your Rock Hard 4x4 bumper. The electrical plug unit, which has the 4 and the 7 way, goes inside of our bracket. This goes in and will clip in place with these factory metal clips. You will then, or you can bolt this in to the bumper first using the supplied bolt and nuts that are included in your hardware kit. The next thing you will do is you will take the factory license plate light and go ahead and install it in place with the nuts on the back side. Now we're going to go ahead and use a 3 8 socket and tighten these in place. On the upper bolt on the right, we do need to use a 3 8 inch wrench. Now we'll go ahead and clip this in place. When you install the license plate light, make sure you put the clip area facing this way. Now install the two plastic nuts on the back side using a 10 millimeter wrench. On our steel replacement bumpers, where we have the bungs welded into the back, sometimes we get a little extra powder coating because we try to coat everything really well in the threads. I'm going to go ahead and tap these out with a 7 16 14 just to make sure that the threads are clear of any type of extra paint in there. This just makes it easier for the install when you're trying to get the bolts in. Now, when you're doing your electrical sensors, we want to talk a little bit about the wiring and the wiring harnesses that we found in the differences in the jails. We found some wiring harnesses that clear where everything matches up and we don't have to do any modifications. And we found a few of them that we do have to do modifications. We found probably more that we have to do modifications than not. So it's not a big deal to, to take all the tape off the back of the complete wiring harness. And you have to do that. You'll find that when you do, you only have to extend one wire. And that's going to the third sensor here. It's really minor. We include a piece of wire and some butt connectors. That way you're able to do that. On this particular situation, on this particular Jeep, the factory had already modified into the factory wiring harness where the customer out wheeling the vehicle had gotten twisted up and it pinched the wires between the frame. So we had to do a little extra work here on this particular one, but we'll show you what we did. But primarily you just do one wire, it's not a big deal. Now, when you're looking at your sensors, you're gonna have your sensor holder and a clip and the sensor. Now, the sensor itself has some clips on it that you can see right here. And our sensor holder has the clips here. Now these are a rock hard 4x4 manufactured piece. Uh, we do sell them to other people in the industry, but we are the ones that manufacture them. They come with two different thicknesses of clip, a thin clip and a thick clip. For guys that are using a 3 16 or a thinner bumper, you'll use the thicker clip. For us, where we use a quarter inch bumper, we use the thin clip. What you're going to do is you want to make sure that you find the top of your sensor. That's going to go in. This comes in from the bumper side. And then the clip goes in this direction and it clips in place like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring the sensor holder through the face of the bumper. And you will push that in place so that it's flush. And you will install the sensor on the back, clip it in place, and, re and install this clip. We're going to go ahead and install our number three sensor. We have it marked T for top, and you want to put it in the, so it'll go in this way, because this is the narrower side and this is the wider side. So you're going to take the wider side, put it in place, go ahead and install the clip. and then go ahead and install the sensor. 
Now that we've went ahead and installed the wiring with the sensors and everything in the back of your JL bumper, let's talk a little bit about the hardware and a few of the things that you need to install before you place the bumper on the end of the frame. The one is the striker and the nut plate. You're going to put the nut plate on the bottom and you'll go ahead and install the striker. We're going to leave this loose at the moment, but you're going to go ahead and install that in place. Now the striker is designed with a nut on the bottom that has the tab on there, therefore you don't have to put a wrench on the inside. The other thing you'll want to install is your plastic hard block. You will do that by dropping the bolts down through the top, as shown here, and these are the shouldered bolts, and you will place the two nuts on the back side. Now, there's a couple hard, pla hard steel blocks. These are going to go on the bottom side of the frame in between the bottom of the bumper and the bottom of the frame. You're also going to locate four black bolts, two on each side. When you look at the inside of the bumper, you'll see that there's two holes on the outside. These are going to go in the, through the bumper and into the back of the frame. You'll reuse on the driver's side your two factory bolts of which you removed when you removed your factory tow hook. Those are going to go from the bottom up into the lower edge of the frame. In the center, you will find that you will get your two gold bolts. They're going to thread into the bungs on the back side of the bumper through the trailer hitch area right by your muffler. You will also find the front and top plate that we've marked. This is the one that slips inside the frame on the passenger side, making the holes which is already threaded in your frame on the driver's side of where your tow hooks went. Next, you will also locate the other two black bolts, and sometimes they're gold. These are the ones that thread in the frame going sideways. Now that you've located all your hardware, installed your plastic block and your striker, we're going to go ahead and set the bumper on the end of the frame. This is a Torx T50 to go ahead and bring the striker down into the bumper. We want to leave it slightly loose, but we want to get it close. Now we're going to go ahead and mount the hard plastic block onto the top of the bumper. This is where the swing rests when you're going down the road. You're going to use a 7 16 in wrench on the bottom side and a 3 8 socket on the top. Go ahead and tighten this down in place. Now go ahead and find the nut plate. It is marked front and top. This is going to slip in the frame rail on the passenger side in this manner. Here's a little tip. You want to be able to connect your electrical before you install it on the vehicle. So go ahead and set the bumper on a table or on two chairs close to the vehicle so that you can connect the electrical. Make sure that when you've installed the electrical housing that the four pin area is on the driver's side making room for the connection on the passenger side. Go ahead and slip that on and install the bumper on the end of the frame. Now after you've set the bumper on the end of the frame, go ahead and slip the spacer block between the frame and the lower section of the bumper on both sides. Now that we've placed the bumper on the end of the frame, you're going to use an 18 millimeter socket on this side because it is using the factory bolts and you'll use a three quarter inch wrench on this side. Go ahead and bring this up snug. This will allow us to put the bolts from the outer edge inward. When installing the JL rear bumper, the two outer upper bolts that are going in the frame this way on the side can be a little bit tricky sometimes to put in. You will reach around from this side and kind of put your finger in the hole to make sure it's lined up. If not, you can adjust the, the tightness of these lower bolts and or sometimes a little bit of a side pro tip is to put something in the receiver and kind of be able to, so you can twist the bumper around, get those lined up so that they run, so that you can run them in by hand and then use a 7 8 socket with a 3 inch extension. Short works the best. Now that we have the, all four hardware on each side, real close to being snug, but a little bit loose because we still want to be able to we have to move the bumper around slightly to install the two 7 16 bolts that go through the factory trailer hitch into the bungs that are welded in the back of the bumper. Go ahead and install them now. Okay. Now that all hardware is in place, go ahead and tighten the two center bolts and the four on each side. Now that we've installed the lower bumper, we want to make sure that we reconnect your sensor hardware wire.
Now we're going to go ahead with the start of the assembly of the swing. We got our lower bumper already on, we got our electrical in place, we have the striker in place, we have the hard plastic block. We've removed the red plastic cap that we put on during shipping to make sure that we don't get any damage to the threads. You're going to want to locate the grease zerk fitting and you'll install that in the end of the swing right here There's a where it's drilled and tapped and you'll use that with an 8 millimeter socket. These are the shims you're going to need, the two thick spacers and the nut. How this is designed is the nice thing about a rock hard 4x4 bumper is this is all the same size top and bottom. Therefore, we have the bearings that are installed inside the swing. You're going to install these shims, one on the bottom and one on the top. This making it so that we have a grease seal here to keep the grease from leaking out. The shim here, the thick one, puts pressure on the bearing. So when the weight's on it, you'll have the pressure on the bearing on the bottom and the top from the nuts what tightens it. We have these series of shims. These shims set the heights of the swing, which we'll go into a little bit later in the installation. But depending on your tire size, normally you're going to start off with around two shims. If you're running a 37, 38 inch tire, you're going to probably start off in the three to four shim area. And if you have a 35 with our can mounts, you're going to be around the three to four to five shim area. But what we're doing is we're setting the height of the swing here. So these shims go on the post, resting against the thick shim or spacer that's inside the hub, and then the nut, your extra shims will go on the top along with the aluminum nut. Now, how that will work is that will set the height of the swing so that when you close it, we want the swing to rest on that hard plastic block. What we do is we want it to be able to, so that it jumps up on the hard plastic block just a little under an eighth of an inch or just right around the sixteenth of an inch. So that way when you're going down the road, all the weight is resting on that block. And that is determined with the tire on the swing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and install the greaser. We've installed the thick shims top and bottom. We've started off with the number of shims we want on the post. We have our high lift jack bolts in place. Now, we have a rubber here, it's going to be held on by a bolt and a nut. We're going to go ahead and install that also. Now, we'll go ahead and tighten this in place. We will install the latch and the components there once the arm is mounted on the Jeep. We're using a couple half inch sockets here to go ahead and tighten down this rubber. Go ahead and start the grease search in place and tighten with an 8 millimeter socket or in wrench. Now go ahead and slide the tire carrier swing onto the post. You want to install the extra shims up on the top. Now I'm going to put a little grease or a little oil on these threads before I thread it on. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. You don't want to tighten it too too much but you want to give it a good snug so that it doesn't come loose with the swing and that when you tighten it down it'll also raise the arm as it puts pulls the bearings tight inside the hub. Now we've set the shims on the right hand side on this particular vehicle we're using a 37 inch tire so I have it set right now with no pressure on it right about an eighth of an inch above the block with the weight of the tire and everything like that it should be about right. Now let's go ahead and identify your latch, your handle and the bolts that hold it in place this nut plate and the three bolts that hold the nut plate with the latch. First of all, you're going to install the handle on the latch. And with the latch in this position, you're going to install the handle on this side with the bolts facing this direction. This will allow the bolt head, when the latch is installed, and the handle to slide in the bumper this way with the bolts to have clearance on the edge. Go ahead and tighten those down at this time. Using a 532nd Allen and a 716 wrench. Now, go ahead and take the nut plate and line it up with the latch so that the holes line up. Then you will slide the nut plate into the, end of the inside of the bumper where you will see the holes. 
you'll bring the latch with the handle like this and install the three bolts from the bottom side going up. This will connect to the nut plate on the inside of the tube. Now that you've went ahead and installed the bolts through the now that you've installed the bolts through the latch into the nut plate on the inside of the bumper, go ahead and just snug them down. You don't want to over tighten these as you ha can squish the latch. Now we're going to go ahead and install the Rockhard 4x4 handle on the end of the latch with the logo facing the back of the bumper and the aluminum plug for the end. Now, sometimes you got to check, make sure there was no burr here that um, you need to clean off to put this in, but if not, you're going to just put this in place and you'll take a mallet and tap that in. Now that we've got the latch installed in the bumper and the end plate and the Rockhard 4x4 badged handle, we're going to go ahead and make sure our striker is centered. The striker is slightly loose a little bit, but enough that we can close the latch, which will center it, release it, and go ahead and snug it down in place. We're going to take a second and talk about the hardware for the high lift jack. We've slotted this area here because there's a Series 1 and a Series 2 high lift jacks and some of the foreign jacks have a different punch pattern in the main beam. So between this the mount over here which is solid, we've made this one adjustable. What you're going to do is you're going to take a 3 quarter inch in wrench, set your distance on your, from your jack and tighten this down. This locking collar you're going to place here on the bolt also and tighten it down with a set screw. This is going to set your distance of the jack away from your bumper so that it doesn't move or rattle or mark up the paint on your bumper. Then once you install the jack, then you're going to tighten down the wing nut on the back side. Now we're going to talk about a lot of the components which you have left over. This here is the tire adapter hikes bracket and this goes in the channel on the back of the tire carrier to set your heights. Now there is no exact height that's perfect. What you're doing is you're setting it to your individual tire needs, whether you have a stock tire, a 35 inch tire, or a 37 inch tire. Um, it's pretty much a personal preference. I normally start off and put the top of the tire adapter in the third bolt hole down. This sets a normal 35, 37 inch tire. We will mount that up here in a second using the 7 16th bolts which will take a 5 8 and 11 16 wrench to tighten them. There will be four on the top, two on each side when we adapt it to the tire bracket and then four here in the back also. So we'll go ahead and mount that in place here in a second. I want to talk to you about the different bolt patterns here on this tire mounting adapter. Now the reason there's so many different bolt patterns is we have a lot of people that have changed the axles in their Jeep, whether they're running an 8 lug, whether they're running a 5 lug, we have some guys that have run a TJ bolt pattern. Whatever bolt pattern you have, there's eight different patterns available here in this particular bracket. Now we're going to with the camera mount, here in a second we'll be mounting the camera mount in the bracket, the camera in the bracket, and we'll install that into the camera mount. Let's go ahead and get started by installing the bracket for the tire hikes and then the adapter. Now, the adapter goes on to the V of here. This allows you to adjust in and out for different offset of wheels and other things that you have, may have mounted to your tire carrier, like the rock racks and stuff. If you're up, r running a rock rack, you'll want to pretty much put the back of the tire so that it's right up against the arms of the rock rack. If you're running a uh, no rack, you want to push it pretty much as tight as you can to keep the weight closest to the vehicle, also giving you better clearance. Now, to install the studs into this bracket, what we're going to use is we're going to use a lug nut, a separate additional lug nut. Now, the thing that you got to remember to see is, is you got splines and you have a, a, sh a shank, a shoulder here on this stud. So what you want to do is put a couple washers so that when you push these through, you're going to put a couple washers on that are larger than the splines or the shank and then you're going to take a lug nut and you will tighten that down, this will pull the stud in place. And we're going to go ahead and mount this, mount this on the vehicle, and pull the studs in place. To install this, you're going to use one of the bolts with a washer on the head of the bolt, a lock washer, and a nut on the back side. Go ahead and repeat this step for all four mounting locations. Now we'll go ahead and tighten these in place using a 5 8 in wrench and 11 16 Now that we've went ahead and 
got all the hardware installed on the tire adapter, we're going to go ahead and tighten all four of these screws also using the 11 16 and 5 8 in wrenches. Now we've stacked up a couple of the larger washers and a couple of regular washers and one of the lug nuts. We're pulling the studs into place. Repeat the process for the remaining two lug nuts. Now we're going to go ahead and install the Rockard 4x4 tailgate bar. This is the bar which the snubber or the rubber bumper from the swing is going to go up against. You will reuse your factory hardware to install this, tightening it down with a 13 millimeter socket. To install the rubber here on the swing, you're going to go ahead and bolt it through using a 5 16 bolt that takes a half inch wrench. Put a lock washer and a nut on the back side, and then you can, if you need, you can add the shim that's provided and more shims if necessary. What you want is when the tire carrier is completely closed and you're up against the rubber down below by the latch, you want to make sure that you're good and squished into the rubber here. So what we've done is we went ahead and set that so that when it's on the first stage of the latch, it touches. That way when it goes to the full stage of the second click of the latch, it's good and pressed into the actual rubber here. This holds good pressure against it to help eliminate any type of vibration. Next, go ahead and locate your camera mount along with the camera that you removed out of your old tire carrier. Go ahead and install the three millimeter screws going through the camera into the mount and install the nuts oops, on the back side. Pretty tiny for my big hands, but we're getting it here. Go ahead and tighten all the screws in place. Earlier in the install, we removed the wiring from the tailgate so we were able to take the camera and stuff out. Now we're going to run the wire for the camera through the opening here and go ahead and connect it onto the back of the camera, making sure it's got a good connection. Next, you will take the camera mount and install the camera mount here through the inside and go ahead and place this on the studs. Now, it has been asked if we do have aftermarket axles in a different pattern, you could drill this to match up to your pattern. There's two O-rings that are included in your kit. We're going to put those on the studs so that it holds this plate while you finish your install. Next, we will put in the splice that lengthens your wiring harness. Now we're going to go ahead and install the mount for the tail light on the back. We're going to go ahead and put it in the upper hole in this particular vehicle because of the size of the tire and the position of where we've mounted the tire carrier. This is adjustable so you can move it up and down according to the tire size that you have. We're going to go ahead and mount it in place. Now we're going to also show you that we make two little spacers that go on the outside here of where the arms bolt on. This is if you need to space it for some reason for your rock rack or other accessories that you've mounted. Now we're going to go ahead and secure the factory tail light in place using the original Torx screws that are a T25. Now go ahead and take the supplied extension for your camera and your brake light. You're going to take the interior plastic pieces off and go ahead and connect these up. Now, you're going to run the wires just along the factory ones here, through the edge and out through the same area of which the wires are fed into the tailgate area. We're going to take some zip ties and go ahead and zip tie this wiring to the factory wiring inside the tailgate.
Now this wiring will run right through the seal here in the bottom and then we will run it up the swing arm to the center of the tire area. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the plastic after we've hooked up the camera and the tail light into the factory harness. We will take the wiring now and run it up the side of the swing arm. We have some self-tapper screws with some metal clips to hold this in place. We, we will now reconnect it to your factory camera and tail light. Now that you've made the connections to the camera and to the tail light, go ahead and take some black tape and tape up the, the connections. Now one thing to keep in mind that we have gotten a couple calls on is the extension that we give you is the extension that goes from inside the tailgate to the factory wires that we pulled out of the tailgate, not directly to the camera itself. We're going to use a 5 16 driver and with these self-tapping screws, put the wire holders in place going up the swing arm. This will hold it from getting caught in anything. Now go ahead and take a grease gun and go ahead and and fill the hub completely full of grease. The idea is that if you keep it full of grease, you will not get the moisture in there as which will ruin the bearings. If you do ruin the bearings, they're available on our website or you can call us, it's not a big deal. But if you do fill it full of grease and keep it so that moisture doesn't get in, the bearings will last forever.